Hi, this is Darius Zangane. Uh, now I'm going to spend some time showing you how to set up users and user roles for administration of the appliance. So if you go to configuration, then users, here you can see by default there's usually just one account, the super user account, which is the uh, uh, root account of the system that you created. You don't create the account, but you create the password and stuff when you first set up your box. You can easily add new users by just clicking the plus, and they can either be LDAP directory based or local users. Uh, and you can assign roles to them and exceptions. And so I will talk to that a little bit. Um, again, the directory is LDAP based accounts. Uh, under, let's just look up a user. Um, when you assign them a role, they have whatever permissions are in that role. Uh, if you want them to have maybe a one-off role, that could be an exception. So for instance, this user has everything that is under the SC user role, as well as if I go to the exceptions, they also have one exception. And that exception is they have access to this nas.pool1. It's basically a project, and I'll show that to you. Uh, you could easily add other exceptions. So I can come in here and here's our, here, these are the things that you can create rules on, both in roles or here's exceptions. So if I wanted to give, for instance, Al access to another project or share, I can come in here, it'll say what pool do I want to create this role on, uh, what project. So I could, for instance, give him access to the ISO project. And then there is, uh, for this specific scope, projects and shares, there's 19 different permissions uh, that you can scroll through and see what they are. It's very granular. Uh, take snap, shadow migration, rollback, cloning, all that sort of stuff. So you could pick and choose what you want, or you could simply click this box and give them access to all 19. Um, you could even pick a specific share if you wanted to. But in this case, we're going to give him access to the entire project. Uh, we click Add and then we click apply and so that's pretty much it so if we go into Al's rules now you'll see he has access to both this uh, his project as well as this ISO project it's the star meaning all shares below it uh, including ones as well if for rule for roles themselves so roles we can apply it to many users like we just did I can go in here and I can see what a rule is configured of. It's very similar, right? So these guys have access to the alert scope. So if you go into alerts, uh, there's only one possible sub-authorization configure, which is there. Data sets, they can configure data sets. Hardware, they can, uh, well, that's a good one to look at. If we go look at hardware, uh, there's a whole bunch of, they can online, offline disks, configure LEDs, uh, configure the service processor, remove drives, configure storage pools, unconfigure. So in this case, people under the SC user role, the only thing we've given them is the LED authorization. They don't have permission to online or offline disk. Um, so yeah, you can go through and you know look at all the different scopes available. And again, you can get extremely granular. For instance, you could make a role for a network admin that would give them access to configure network devices, data links, and interfaces, but maybe nothing else. Maybe everything else is read-only. Uh, default out of the box, there's basically only one real role, this basic role, which is basically read-only access um, into the box. It, it doesn't uh, have any change access, so you can assign a user that if you have a, a new employee or something like that. You can see here we have many different roles that we've created on our box. But uh, that, in a nutshell, is how you create user-based roles and exceptions. Thank you so much.